So here's the thing. If you're putting out a whole bunch of proposals, and even if you're winning them, there's a right way to win a proposal and a wrong way to win a proposal. And you're going, wait a minute, that doesn't make any sense. If you win a proposal because you're the lowest price, you'll win. But I don't think that's going to be the right thing. I don't think you're going to get what you think you're going to get from it. Because the lowest price doesn't put you in the expert seat. If you win a deal because you're the only person who submitted a, a proposal, right, in the right range, I, you'll win it. I don't think it's the right thing because, again, you're not going to be in the expert seat. What do I mean by the expert seat? I mean that when you win a deal because someone has decided you're the expert they need to hire, you get more than winning the deal. You get more than the premium price that you put on the quote. You get the opportunity to drive most of the discussions, to give an opinion that counts, and to have people follow you as you navigate the rest of the project. It's a massively different dynamic when you win a deal that way. So how do you go about taking the expert seat? Well, that's what we're going to talk about. Because there's one kind of story that you put in the conversation, one kind of story you put in the proposal that changes the nature of how you win that deal. It's what I call a prediction story. And I'm just going to walk it through real quickly and easily so that you can leverage this tactic when you're talking with prospects, when you're getting ready to put a proposal out. We know that there's cause and effect for everything. Cause and effect, we understand it. We know that you wrap context around cause and effect. But most of the time when we're talking, we haven't done the reflection on uh, frameworks, the reflection on kind of the, the nuggets of understanding that allows us to look at past situations, craft it up into a cause and effect story with context around it, and then prepare it for the next conversation. In fact, I bet when you go in, when you're talking to a prospect, you're just kind of winging it, right? You don't know where the conversation is going to go. And so maybe you have a story that's interesting, or maybe you have, you know, yeah, this is something like that, but you haven't prepared prediction stories. Prediction stories are the context that wraps the situation and the effect, not the cause. The context and the effect. And what happens is you don't even have to tell it as a story. You can tell it as a question. You don't have to make it a declaration. You don't have to make it a prediction per se. You don't have to say, well, I predict this is going to happen because that can make people feel a little defensive. But you can say, hey, are you noticing that even while you made the uh, hard things easier, that now some of the easy things are getting harder? I don't know if you're like most of the folks I work with, but you get to a point where suddenly even little things start taking a long time. Now you're doing that in a certain context, but you're talking about the effect and the effect is what allows them to connect the dots between what you're describing and what they're experiencing. And, and then they go, wait, either it's already happening and they go, are you reading our mail? Like, how do you know this? Or they go, no, we're not having that happen. And then it happens. And when it happens, you're the expert. One of the earliest times I did this, I was meeting with a very large company, you know, and I said, well, if you do it like this, my worry, I guess, and I don't know if this happens for you, my worry would be that this particular issue is going to start backing things up. And all of a sudden, your, your whole infrastructure could just fall down. And the guy in the room who owns that infrastructure was like, no, that, that doesn't happen for us. You go, oh, okay. And then on the day of the launch, within one hour of launching, the whole thing fell down. And an executive in the room said, hey, get the guy on the phone that said this was going to happen. See, that's, you, you, you were planting, and it was, sometimes it's in the form of a question. Sometimes it's a full-blown story. Like, here's what I've seen happen. I don't know if this is happening for you. And they go, oh, yes. But even if they're not ready to say yes, at the moment when it happens, if it comes true, they're like, Get the guy who knew how to predict the future, get him in the room. And it puts you in the expert seat and it changes the nature of everything else. It gives you the kind of credibility that allows you to lead and not just be 
the whipping boy for someone. If you win on lowest price, you know they're going to be hammering at you over and over again. If you win as an expert, they're sitting back and going, well, he's the expert or she's the expert. Let's listen to what they have to say. Prediction stories can be very powerful. And I recommend that you do the analysis on the work you've already done to turn your experience into the kind of expertise that allows you to leverage prediction stories when you're putting bids and quotes out there.